the oceans are a vital source of nourishment for billions of people worldwide. It is fundamental to make sure that seafood is healthy and produced sustainably. By 2030, aquaculture is expected to supply 60% of the world's fish and shrimp. However, for aquaculture to grow, it must become even more sustainable. Innovation is uh, the main success factor for the development of aquaculture. It has been such a journey from very basic cultivation of wild animals to a modern food production. And that could not happen if not the industry had been extremely focused on innovation. So Norway is the leading aquaculture industry in the world. In fact, they are the pioneers of the salmon industry and are the leaders in technology adoption. So we're operating across all geographies in every part of the world. But it's all about getting down to the local business. And we've been working with Geo Johnson for over 100 years. And through our partnership, we're able to bring all the solutions that the industry needs at scale, but addressing the local needs. Geo Johnson is the agent and long-term partner of the company, working in and with the aquaculture industry in Norway. Salmon contributing actually today to 16 million meals being served all around the globe every day. The aquaculture industry has a tremendous future ahead of itself, providing high quality protein to a growing population. But it has to do this in a sustainable footing. And that means addressing uh, fish nutrition, uh, productivity, health and welfare. The sustainability focus has broadened and, and more recently, we clearly have got a focus on the climate impact. 80% of the climate uh, emissions in aquaculture comes from the feed. And finally, I will also say that one of the hottest sustainability topics is fish welfare or animal welfare. Healthy oceans are highly important for ensuring healthy and thriving salmon and trout. And the quality of the end product is directly linked to the health and welfare of our fish. But it's also part of the social contract with the consumers. So it's a topic to secure that your animal is healthy and that you continue to supply a sustainable product. We have a responsibility to support producers who are serious about minimizing their negative impact by including their raw materials into our feed and exclude products and producers that are harmful. We make a difference. We take a really holistic approach and a very coherent approach to how we tackle sustainability in animal protein uh, production. And that means really focusing on the, the topics that matter. Um, and that's based around a broad portfolio of solutions, everything from our, our vitamins business all the way through to our performance solutions business and precision services. As a company, we set targets. Uh, we have science-based targets in terms of carbon emissions and we also are very much in tune and aligned with the UN Sustainability Development Goals, so-called SDGs. But to make that happen, we focus on key areas that matter to animal protein production, whether it's land animal production or aquaculture. We work with partnerships throughout the value chain. It's so important to work with others. Sustainability is systems thinking. You can't do this on your own. A good example of this is our collaboration with the Sustainable Shrimp Partnership in Ecuador. The most important thing is how we can democratize LCA. LCA, or life cycle assessment, has really been in the domain of experts. And for the value chain to really get on top of the environmental footprint of animal production, then we need to expand the use of LCA. And it's done through advanced, yet very user-friendly platforms like Sustel. We've developed Sustel over many, many years, and we haven't just done that on our own. We've worked with many uh, partners in, in this respect, it's in the shrimp industry with Grupo Alma in Ecuador. We measure our product's carbon footprint collaborating with Sustel, an industry-leading life cycle assessment platform from DSM Firmenich. Through Sustel, we understand and improve our impact in every step of the supply chain. We are proud to say that we are leading the shrimp industry with the lowest carbon footprint at just 4.18 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of shrimp produced. 
We acknowledge that we need to do more with less to secure a sustainable growth. We are producing feed in nature, in the fjords, and we need to evolve in a manner that protects biodiversity and safeguards natural ecosystems. And the importance of transparency towards customers, government and other stakeholders cannot be underestimated. In recent years, we have included novel ingredients uh, such as microalgae oil, insect meal, krill meal and crab shell meal. You see that wild salmon and trout, they eat whole fish and they eat insects, so we're trying to replicate nature. And this is also sustainable, uh, so it's a win-win. We are currently considering various fermented plant-based raw material and single-cell protein. So meeting the sustainability and nutritional needs of the fish go hand in hand. A great example is increasing demand for omega-3 oils, which are a fundamental nutritional requirement for many aquaculture species. Here we address that topic by building the Verimaris business, an alternative way of producing omega-3 uh, fatty acids, not only making aquaculture much more sustainable, but also ensuring that the aquaculture species, salmon and shrimp, for example, get access to more omega-3 oils. I think one of the biggest challenges we all face is the number of people on this planet. And the world population is going to grow up to 10 million people. So the big question is, how do we feed 10 billion people in the, in the future? I think aquaculture in general, warm and cold water fish play a super important role to feed the world.